Hi Leo, this is your February monthly tarot reading. I do five separate spreads in my monthly readings. We'll have a spread on new love, a separate spread on love in an existing relationship or marriage. I'll do an X spread. We'll talk about your work, your business, and your finances. And uh, we'll get you an advice for the whole month of February. Please like, subscribe, and share this video to support this channel. This first spread is a new love in February. We have the Chariot, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. We have the Queen of Wands, clarified by the Ten of Cups. We have the Ten of Pentacles. In the potential outcome, we have the Six of Wands with the, the Two of Cups and the Star. And we also have the Lovers on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with uh, Cancer or an Aquarius or a Gemini or pretty much any zodiac sign, this is a general reading. Not only is it a general reading, it's probably the last reading you'll ever need, because <laughs> you're gonna get married. You're gonna get, you're gonna marry this person. And you know, uh, it made no sense for me to even pull that potential outcome right there with those three cards. The reason why I did it, to be honest with you, I was hoping to see a court card, uh, but we got, we still got no court cards. You know what we, uh, what else we don't have here? We don't have any pages. We don't have any knights. We don't have any aces. So basically, this situation here has no beginning, so to speak. There is only a conclusion, the end. This is like a done deal, right? The universe doesn't want us to waste any time on looking at the beginning. <laughs> the, the, the universe wants us to concentrate on the on the outcome here. And the outcome, like I said, it's marriage. It's like no other way to interpret this, right? Um, so yeah, let's talk about this real quick. By the way, we got uh, quite a few uh, major arcana cards. They are amazing major arcana cards by themselves and especially together. We got two soulmate cards as well, right? Uh, so the first card I came out is the Chariot. This is a very powerful card. By the way, it's the personal cancer card. You could be dealing with a cancer. Or the Chariot is a card of victory. It's a card of success. It's a card of moving forward and not looking back, right? The chariot could also be a card of uh, you actually going someplace together with this person. For some of you, you could be meeting this person while you're traveling. And speaking of traveling, the Wheel of Fortune clarifying the chariot is also a travel card. And uh, as uh, some of you may already know, the same card could uh, mean multiple things in the same spread, right? But uh, if you want to stay general, then the Wheel of Fortune is like kind of a confirmation of the Chariot card. A very powerful major arcana card as well. One major arcana card clarifying the other. The Wheel of Fortune in general is all about starting a new cycle, a very fortunate new cycle. The Wheel of Fortune is always good news in my spread. So this is how we start this reading from, with two very powerful major arcana cards, both of which are car, uh, travel or victory or starting new cycles. Right? Then we got you, Leo. The Queen of Wands, the next card over, I believe that's you. Um, male or female, absolutely doesn't matter. And uh, to be honest with you, the, the Queen of Wands was the last card I clarified. I don't know why I did it, but I, I was kind of wondering how you will feel about this whole situation. And the Ten of Cups came out. So you are definitely on board. The Ten of Cups is one of the commitment or marriage cards. You're looking forward to getting married to this person. You're looking forward to starting a family, having children, if that is still an option for you. Because the Ten of Cups is a family card and it's actually often called the happily ever after card. So that's how you will feel about this, right? And the, the next card I came out is after the Queen of Wands is the Ten of Pentacles, right? This is another commitment of marriage card, a very solid one. The difference between the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups, whereas uh, the Ten of Cups is mostly emotionally, um, you know, abundance, emotional abundance, family, but the Ten of Pentacles is more of a practical side of things, right? This is when people buy real estate together. Uh, this is a very long-term, very grounded, very serious, financially stable type of a deal with the Ten of Pentacles. So you're basically getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the emotional fulfillment and uh, stability and uh, a house with a dog and a car <laughs> or a cat if you're a cat person, right? Um, we have the lovers on the bottom of the deck, all the way to your right. The, the lovers is the personal Gemini card. You could be dealing with a Gemini. Or the lovers is um, one of the soulmate cards we have here on the table. We'll talk about the second one in just a second. The lovers is also a twin flame connection card, if you believe in twin flames. The lovers could be a choice. Granted, we'll choose to be in relationships or marriages, but I don't really see you hesitating, to be honest with you. Like I said, um, 
the Queen of Wands is clarified by the Ten of Cups, or you are 100% on board. <laughs> so most likely the Lovers is either a Gemini, the Lovers is either a soulmate or a Twin Flame connection, then the, the Lovers could simply be the lover of your life. You know, in the uh, potential outcome, which I still decided to uh, get, uh, we have uh, the Six of Wands with the Two of Cups and the Star. The Six of Wands, in this case, I believe is a proposal. The Six of Wands used to be called the Proposal card. Then we got the Two of Cups. This is the second Soulmate card, right? That's actually one of the best cards when it comes to love connections. It's a card of unconditional love. It's a card of two people being on the same page. Right, and uh, the very last card that came out is the star. The star is the personal Aquarius card. You could be dealing with an Aquarius, or the star is a card of a wish come true, something people usually wish for or hope for for a very long time. Right, um, it's also an Aquarius card. I think I mentioned it's an Aquarius card. Yeah, so like I said, that's a done deal. We don't have a beginning here. <laughs> we only have the outcome. This whole spread, this whole reading so far is the outcome, and it's amazing with those two commitment of marriage card. Um, very powerful connection. This person is at least your soulmate. Could be more if you, depending on your personal beliefs. Really happy for you, Leo. Congratulations, Leo. If you are already married or if you're in a relationship, this spread is for you. We have the five of ones, clarified by the ten of ones. We have the four of ones. We have the knight of cups, and uh, we also have the six of swords on the bottom of the deck. Um, if you've been fighting with your significant other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, that's going to come to an end. But for some of you, you could be getting into an argument or a fight at some point in February, but then uh, love will prevail. Um, the good news here is that there is no major account of cards on the table. So if you haven't been fighting and uh, if something happens in February where you'll have a choice to fight or not, you can not. And I'm not saying you're the one who is initiating this fight. You could be. It could be them. But it could be avoided. You know, a fight, you know, is, gen is a waste of time in general. That's the way I perceive it. But anyway, we got the 501s, qualified by the 1001s. The 501s is a card of a confrontation, an argument, a fight. Uh, the 1001s is a card of a burden. So obviously, when we fight, it is a burden. Some of you could be fighting over a burden or responsibilities or um, like errands. So this fight could be sparked by something as simple as somebody needing to run an errand, you know. But in general, I think for most of you, the Ten of Wands is a burden because you've been fighting or you're going to get into this fight. The Four of Wands in the middle, this is a card of a committed relationship or marriage. And then we have the Knight of Cups with the Six of Swords. The Knight of Cups is all about love, right? And the Six of Swords on the bottom of the deck, this is a card of an improvement, this is a card of a rough patch being over, this is a card of um, things getting better, right? So instead of fighting, just always remember that you are in each other's lives to make each other's lives better. And that's one of my mantras. That's what I usually say to people. We are in each other's lives to, ch to make each other's lives better, not worse, right? So choose the Knight of Cups instead of the 501s. The Knight of Cups, like I said, is all about love, 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 all right? Let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you, Leo, this month. Keep in mind, it could be somebody from a couple of months ago, a year ago, or a couple of years ago. So it doesn't have to be the most recent X. We have the King of Pentacles, clarified by the Ace of Pentacles. We have the Tower, we have the World, and we also have the Nine of Swords on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. So yeah, um, pretty much every time I get comments from you guys <laughs> that you never take anybody back, and I'm not judging you, I'm just stating <laughs> the obvious, right? And uh, that's exactly what's going to be happening here, right? It's going to be up to you what you want to do here. If you don't want this person back, totally understandable. If you do want to give them a second chance, perhaps you could, right? Uh, the world right next to the deck was the last card that came out. Then the world is my happy end card. But in this case, you'll just have to figure out what would be the happy end for you. Is it going to be together with this person or is it going to be together with uh, another person at some point in the future so yeah you'll just have to figure it out 
Um, but uh, the King of Pentacles, the first guy that came out, uh, is the person coming back from the past. It could be an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And um, just so you know, this person is serious about you, right? Because uh, the uh, King of Pentacles is clarified by the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles, by the way, could be a proposal. Uh, this card often does come through as a proposal. Um, and I see it all the time, you know, when people think that the only way to get somebody back is to propose to them. If it's not a proposal right away, then, um, like I said, this person is serious about you. The Ace of Pentacles is a golden opportunity. It's a, it's a very serious offer coming from them. Then we have the Tower in the middle. The Tower could symbolize what happened between the two of you in the past, you know, your relationship falling apart. Or the Tower symbolizes uh, them unexpectedly showing up. And uh, the Nine of Swords on the bottom of the deck, it could be your energy, their energy, both of your energies. This is a card of somebody who is struggling with a decision, somebody who can't sleep at night, somebody who's got anxieties and all that type of stuff, right? Perhaps you will be struggling with the, the decision. Some of you will not, like I said. Some of you will just say, you know what, nope, this is done, it's over with, bye-bye. And that's the way they're feeling, crying themselves to sleep. For others of you, it could be you struggling with a decision. Perhaps you still have feelings for this person, right? So again, with the world card, whatever you think your happy end has to be when it comes to this particular individual, this particular ex, then, you know, you are definitely in charge of this decision here, all right? Let's talk about your work, your business, and your finances, uh, Leo, this month. We have the Queen of Swords, clarified by the Five of Cups. We have the Three of Swords, we have the Five of Wands, and we also have the Four of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Air Sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. It's a bit of a weird spread, but I see these spreads every once in a while. The Queen of Swords is the person you, you're dealing with, or you were dealing with at some point in the, few, in the past, and probably in the future as well, because this person is coming back. Right? The Queen of Swords could be an air sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or somebody who's got a very short fuse. And I think the two of you got into a fight, or the two of you were uh, basically had some sort of a fallout. Right? It could be somebody you used to work with or still work with, could be a business partner, um, somebody who has something to do with the, with the way you make your money. Right? So that's the Queen of Swords right there. And this Queen of Swords regrets what happened between the two of you. The Queen of Swords is clarified by the Five of Cups. The Five of Cups is a card of a regret or grieving. Uh, so they do grieve, they do regret not having you in their life or they do regret the fact that they were the one who started the fight. Uh, the Three of Swords in the middle is a card of a devastation, it's a card of a betrayal, it's a card of a broken heart. The Five of Wands right next to the deck is a card of a fight. It's a card of a confrontation, a conflict. So that probably was what happened between the two of you. And I think this person wants to bury the hatchet with you. They want to reconnect with you. But uh, your answer is going to be no. The four of cups right next, I mean, uh, on the bottom of the deck is a card of a rejection. So when they do come towards you wanting to bury the hatchet, your answer is going to be no. I don't know what this person did to you, but I don't... It kind of looks like it was just really bad, you know. Perhaps this person stabbed you in the back, or they um, ratted you out, or they betrayed you in some shape or form, you know, cheated you out of your money, um, you know, something crazy with the Three of Swords. And therefore, you, you're just not going to be able to forgive and forget. All right? Cool. Here's an advice or a word of wisdom for you, uh, Leo, for the whole month of February. We have the Queen of Wands, uh, we have the Ten of Swords clarified by the Devil, we have the Six of Wands, and we also have the Seven of Wands on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Capricorn. Um, if a Capricorn comes your way, um, I think you should dismiss this person, because uh, the, the Devil the is uh, the Capricorn card, and it's clarifying the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords is a card of an ending or a card of a shutdown. Right? If it's not a Capricorn you're dealing with, and I think that's uh, what this reading is for, for the most of you, February is going to be a great mar month for you to um, conquer something within you, like a toxic behavior, smoking. Uh, if it will be a good month for you to quit smoking if you've been having other problems, like excessive 
eating or if you've been eating a particular types of food, unhealthy food, I think February is going to be a good month for you to finally conquer it, to finally put an end to it, whatever uh, your issue was. You know, I'm not saying you're having issues, but for some of you perhaps it's a good time to go back to the gym. <laughs> and like I said, it's a good time for you to quit something, something that's been um, toxic for you. That's what I believe the devil is. And the Ten of Swords, this is you ending it, putting an end to it. Speaking of you, the Queen of Wands, the first card that came out, that's you, Leo, male or female, absolutely doesn't matter. The Six of Wands right next to the deck, it's a card of victory, it's a card of success. So if you do uh, end something, or if you do conquer it, you will feel great about it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but uh, the universe says uh, February is going to be a perfect month to conquer it, to, to put something to rest. The seven of ones on the bottom of the deck, that is also your energy, Leo. This is you fighting it and uh, winning. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, so whatever's been holding you back, something that's been dragging you down, or whatever um, problems you've had so far, like smoking and what have you, uh, February is, good, is the perfect month for you to quit it. Alright, so that's what I got for you, Leo, for this month. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please also share and subscribe. And uh, other than that, Leo, have an amazing February. And there you have it. This was your tarot reading for this time period. I hope it resonated with you and helps you live a better life one way or the other. Thank you for watching, sharing and subscribing.